All right, guys, and this is it. It's the new career mode, and we are taking on the most difficult challenge F1 2015 has to offer. It's the pro season career mode. To be a Formula One driver takes dedication, skill, and ultimately speed. In pro season, you'll need all three, as well as a slice of luck. This is for the players who don't want compromises, who wants the ultimate driving challenge. To give you a real racing experience, you'll be driving in cockpit camera mode. The on-screen display has been removed, so you'll be relying on your race engineer for essential information. Finally, it wouldn't be pro without the full race distance. With the other drivers at their highest difficulty, you'll need to give everything you've got to make an impression. Welcome to Pro Season. Right, well that's the introduction, and I seriously hope that at some point in this career I'm not doing a 100% race in the rain at Singapore, as, I was, as was just shown there. But now it's time to choose our car, and a little bit of debate has been going on in my mind as to which car I'm going to be choosing. However, we are going to be looking at the Sahara Force India, driving as Mr. Sergio Perez. So I looked at some of the other videos, mainly um, you know, Ben or Tim at Maddox's videos of the of the pro season of seeing him in the Red Bull and let's face it I'm a better driver than Ben sorry Ben um, so I thought we'll give a, give ourselves a bit more of a challenge we'll go in the Force India see what happens so Sergio Perez my man you are up so this is what we're dealing with we're dealing with full practice which we're not going to be taking a part in because it's just pointless full qualifying so all three parts of qualifying and there so obviously trying to get through Q1 I presume maybe on primes setting our time trying to get in the top 10 and starting on the tire we do in q2 and then q3 of course if we make it trying to get as high up the grid as possible 100 percent race distance excellent and dynamic weather excellent okay let's start the session so we are now going to be heading out onto the track so with the uh with the cockpit cam of course uh we have at least got our track position in the top right of their po6 at the moment as you can see but nothing that's going to tell us about uh, what lap we're on, what the gaps are. Absolutely, what you see on screen now is what's going to be happening throughout the entire qualifying and race. So it's going to be a challenge for sure. And I'm really kind of shitting myself at the fact of the uh, the strict corner cutting rules. I'm sure are going to make me explode and quit after maybe five laps, probably. But I say, although I know I said we're not going to bother with the practice, I thought. It's been a while since we played the game. We need to actually make sure we can keep the car on the track and we do actually complete a lap and a race at that. So we're just going to spend a couple of laps here just to get warmed up, see what we can do before heading into qualifying. Oh, man. Well, there's the uh, first mistake. Only took us less than two laps to do that. Because we have a huge tank slap, so we just understeered completely wide out of that third to last turn. Let's have a quick look at that from the external camera just to see how wild that was. If the game actually gave us an external camera, that would be terrific. There we go. So you see flying through, just running a little bit wide, kicking up the gravel and having a huge tank slapper there. Managed to keep it pointing in the right direction, luckily enough for us. But there's our first warning sign. Of just going a little bit beyond the limit, trying to test the grounds early on, um, but there we found the limit and gone slightly over it, so we have to rein it in a little bit as we try and complete a proper lap here at practice. Now isn't the time race engineer, I'm on a bloody lap, do you mind? Do this in the fucking debrief or the track walk or something, not whilst I'm out on track in the bloody car, thank you very much. I think we'll cut that out early on in the bloody career mode. Oh, pissing fuck. Engineer, I'm going to literally mow you down when I get back to the pit lane. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. Well, there we go. We finally made it into qualifying after all the practice sessions have been skipped. Uh, thank you, Codemasters, for putting that back in the game. That's a top dollar job. Um, so we've got 18 minutes to see if we can pop a lap in that's going to be good enough to get through to the top uh, top 16. Yeah, it's top 16, isn't it? It's been a while since everyone's been on, but yeah, it's only top 16. Um, we're going to look at doing some prime tyre runs, see if we can 
get close enough on those tyres. Load of setup. This is what we're running, just in case anybody who is slightly interested. Uh, we're not running that at all. I don't know why I've gone over there. It's that one. There we go. So four one wings, 80%, 70%. Uh, I'm not going to read it out anymore because you can see it on screen. And we're going to take that down because we don't want that fuel in. Maybe five laps or so. So we can maybe go for a couple of, couple of hot laps um, there. So good. Let's go. So that's the end of Q1 and we have managed to get through on the prime tyres unlike anybody else except Daniel Ricciardo the big fool of trying to get through on prime tyres but in the end only well only faster than the two Man Marushas other than that he is down in P18 so that is one car well out of position which means Fernando Alonso and Jensen Button both go through. I've completely fucked up here already, haven't I? Earlier in the earlier in the episode, I've already said, oh, it's the top 16. It's not. It's the top 15, isn't it? Or is it the 16? I don't know Formula 1 anymore. Let's just go to the next part of qualifying where we will feature in it. We're up a set of option tyres compared to everyone else. Let's go. Fantastic. Well... That wasn't a particularly great lap, but I'll take first place if that's what you're going to give me. That's a very disappointing performance from Fernando well, Alonso. there you have it. We are top of the timetables at the end of Q2, ahead of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Unbelievable stuff. So the lap wasn't particularly great, so obviously the first lap we've done on options was a little bit scruffy, but it's good enough to get through to the top 10 shootout. That'll be the tyres, or the set tyres we start the race on. Um, Nico Hogberg hasn't made it through, he's down in 12th, 2.2 seconds off the pace, so as you see the more laps we're doing the quicker and quicker and more confident we're getting, so hopefully we might be able to do something uh, meaningful with this top 10 shootout, but I do fear that the Mercedes and Ferraris do have a little bit of extra pace that they're not yet showing, so it's going to be very close, but let's head into the final part of qualifying. So here we go then, this is the lap that's going to set our grid position. Let's see how we can get on. Not a bad run through the first two corners. Broke a little bit early, but it really got us a good exit out of there. A little bit cautious on the brakes into turn three again. Nice line through turn four, though. Flat through there. Now coming into the second sector. Clipping the apex nicely. It's really nice to actually drive this track to the limits um, and not pass them because the game will punish you now with these new settings in place. It really is a nice challenging circuit when you have to drive to the white lines and not pass them. It really is. Oh, we've run slightly wide there. That's going to compromise our whole run through that chicane. Not good, but we'll see. We'll have to carry on. We haven't got any other choice. Run through the final corner then, watching the throttle. Full on now. DRS open, driving to the line. What's it going to be for a one and only lap in Q3? It's P3 for the time being. Which I presume is going to be just behind the two Mercedes at this stage. Of course, three, well, just under four minutes to go, but we haven't got enough time to get back to the pit lane and get back out again. So that is going to be our one run. So P3 at best, we'll have to wait and see what the final classifications are going to be when the timer hits zero. So there you have it, it's Hamilton on pole with Kimi Raikkonen up in second in the Ferrari with a 27-0. Of course, Hamilton, the only man getting in the 26s. So we're in P3, right behind the uh, the front row there, just three tenths off pole, so a good effort there, ahead of one of the Mercedes, Nico Rosberg. Then we've got Massa, Vettel, Bottas, and then Sainz, Maldonado, and Nasa rounding out the top 10. So that's the grid. All that's left now is to complete this 100% Australian Grand Prix. So let's get to it. Oh, get fucked. Are you having me on? Oh, my God. 
It's fucking it down. Oh my. Right, okay, Crofty's still talking. Shut up, there we go. Right, well that's a turn up for the books. So, there goes all those option tyres and lovely fresh tyres that I saved in qualifying by only doing one run in each session. Cheers. So, looks like just the one stop at the midway point through the race. 97 minutes. Oh my god. Okay, let's do this. 58 laps. We haven't got to worry about undercutting or two stopping or three stopping or any of that nonsense. It looks like it's just going to be a pure one stop race. So let's try and keep things consistent. Keep out of trouble mainly and then see how the race unfolds from there. From P3, we've got a perfect view of the Mercedes and the Ferrari ahead as the five red lights are now coming on. Five lights are there. And away they go. Race is underway as we're trying to manage the traction as best we can. It's a pretty good start, actually. We're pulling up alongside Kimi Raikkonen as we try and be very careful. We're going to look around the outside and I think we have got that place back. Well, I say got that place back. We've got that move done. However, Raikkonen coming charging back at us up the run to turn three. So we try to bro break at the right mark. Say, so I haven't driven in the rain for such a long time. I have no idea if the braking points are the same as what they are in the dry or if they're just a little bit more cautious. But Hamilton has completely escaped at this stage already. However, we have made a place up off the grid and we are up into P2. Now we need to settle in, try and keep Raikkonen behind as we get a huge wheel spin and turn on gear 4 and gear 5. This is really quite challenging. Rosberg, I believe, is now ahead of Kimi Raikkonen and we just need to try and settle into a rhythm, calm down a little bit and try and settle in nicely. Although Rosberg is not going to let us do that one little bit. He's right on our gearbox and hopefully he's not going to try anything stupid at this early point of the race. Because we've got absolutely no grip. There's absolutely no grip at all. Look at the train! Oh, Rosberg's up the inside. He's blocked. He's backed out of it. I don't know which way he's going. We're going to cover the inside. And we just got no grip. There's absolutely no grip at the moment on these tyres. Yellow flags are out. Rosberg is now behind Kimi Raikkonen. Hamilton has just disappeared into another time zone. And that is the end, just about, of the first lap. I think... I need to try and settle into a rhythm, maybe stop talking and just see if we can actually find out what's going on with this car on, on this track in these conditions because it is not behaving itself at all. Cheeky, very cheeky, need to stop doing that otherwise this race isn't going to last anywhere near 100%. Fuck, that was, that was pretty close to a corner cut. I know right, Vettel's right there, but I need to check to see how we're doing on this kind of thing. Please. Okay. Oh, that was on lap 9, which I guess was a couple of laps ago where we seem to have cut and ex extended in the same lap. Still, only two one is at this point in the race. Is, oh, my flying Jesus! Please tell me he's not still there. Oh. Oh, Vettel's actually had a had an error. What's happened there? Go. Show us what you got, Vettel. What's happening? What have you done? So you're going around the outside. Fair play. Um okay. Just fancied a bit of a lawn mowing midway through the race. Fair enough. Well, thanks for that, because that now means Rosberg is right up my anus once more. There he is, and we're going to make him go to the outside once again. Although he's been extremely brave on the brakes this time. We're going to run in a bit deep, and we have just about managed to get that position back, but that was a real scare, as I really thought that late braking caught me off guard completely. Ooh, that's an interesting update from the engineer. Thank you very much for that piece of information. Things definitely look to be turning a bit better in terms of the weather, shall we say, for this uh, remainder of the race. However, things that aren't looking better are my chances of staying ahead of Rosberg, who I'm pretty sure at some point is going to blow me and himself up if he's not careful. Please, Rosberg, please. We didn't party in the Amber Lounge, but I know somebody who you did. 
do that with. That's got to count for something, right? And it has. Thanks. Cheers. Okay, right. How are we going to defend from you? We're going to cover the inside once more. You're going to go to the outside. That's fine. I'm going to understeer like a gypsy, and then I'm going to block you off. Where have you gone? Oh, you've gone in the gravel. Interesting. Very interesting. And now you've been replaced by a red car. It's like a magic trick. You look behind you once, it's a silver car. You look, you look forwards, you look behind again, it's a red car. Ooh, we've got cars in the pit lane. One for the Mercedes ahead, and as we take the lead, Sebastian Vettel has disappeared from behind us as well. So, what's going on there? The rain looks to have possibly eased up just a little bit. I'm wondering if intermediates are possibly what they're going on to. We're going to have to make a decision next time we come around as to what we want to do. Oh, brilliant. So you decided to tell me that a couple of corners after when it really mattered. Excellent. It's so annoying that the engineer can't tell me that ahead of time. Why wait till everyone pits and then, oh yeah, actually, it is actually time to be on those tyres which everyone's already gone to, but you're not. Let's see how much time that's going to have cost us then in the grand scheme of things, as we've done an extra lap than pretty much everybody, I believe, as there's absolutely nobody else anywhere near coming up to the pit lane. Excellent. I do hope it puts one to meet tyres. I'm sure I selected them, and I have. Excellent. 2.4. Pretty decent stop. We're already under P2 there. Let's have a look, see where Vettel and Rosberg and if anyone else possibly is going to be. Well, there goes the Ferrari. So that's P3 at the moment. There's Rosberg, so we managed to stay ahead of him, so we're still on the podium for now. I was about to say, it can't be too long before DRS is enabled. In fact, Rosberg's already using it. That is not fair. So we need to try and catch up to Vettel if we can to get within DRS range because otherwise we're going to be a sitting duck to Rosberg but also what that tells me is that we must be getting close to it being dry tyres okay so I'm calling it we're going on to option tyres this time round I don't really care what the AI do I'm feeling it what's going on so the Vettel stays out Rosberg by Elizabeth stays out as well so we are the only car coming into the pit lane at this point of the race for a set of dry tyres. Now, what is that going to do for the complexion of the race and how long before the AI come in as well? This is a crucial point of the race, it has to be said. 2.4 seconds once more. That'll do, boys. Option tyres are on. We'll have one more stop to make, I believe, until the end of the race. As we light the rears up out of the pit lane. That's not a good sign, it must be said. No, they're not. They're just not, though, are they, engineer? Let's be honest. So we've got a car up ahead. Is that car going to peel into the pit lane? Can't quite see. No, he doesn't. And that might be why, because it still doesn't quite seem ready. And, I mean, that sky is definitely grey. Like, more grey than what it was. Don't you dare tell me that it's not going to completely stop raining. Right, well, that's good. Can like next 10 minutes be like now, instantly? Okay, so you're telling me all the good information, but... I have to tell you, from being out on the track, it doesn't feel that way. That looked like an AI car going in the pit lane. Wait, what? Fitting intermediates? Sorry? Who's this? Is that Rosberg? It is. We'll get DRS, surely. Where's my DRS gone? Why has Rosberg got DRS and I haven't? 
I don't know. I've gone up the inside. We squeezed him off. We'll take it. Of course, we didn't have DRS because at the detection point, we weren't within a second. I understand that now. But that is us up back coming to P3. I didn't actually catch what tyres Rosberg was on. I really hope my engineer telling me that people are going on to intermediates was true. But the way Rosberg's keeping up with, with me and the way Vettel's disappeared, I really don't think they are on intermediates. They've got too much grip, they must be on options. Oh my word. We nearly binned it once more at that final corner. If anything, it might have helped us because it means Rosberg now doesn't have the uh, the slipstream down the pit straight. And by going for the outside line once more, not only has he cost himself... Oh, there's... That Williams, is, has he made the move? I don't think he has. He's got very close. He's gone off track to try and avoid Rosberg. I'll try and get a replay of that when I'm not going to crash in mid-corner. Let's have a look. See what happens. Obviously, Rosberg's gone around the outside of us once more. The move that he seems to enjoy far too much in terms of trying to overtake us. Let's have a look here from the Williams. So coming through, you see Rosberg's gone horribly wide, just about recovers, and then the Williams tries to go around the outside, but of course the corner tightens on the exit, and he just grazes the wall there, I think, with his right rear. Let's have a quick look at that, see how close he really was. So he runs completely wide, sees how far off he's going, tightens up the steering once more. Right about there, and as you can see, the wall getting closer and closer and closer as he just grazes it. Yeah, just a little nick on the right rear. So, of course, we saw Bottas do that in, I think it was the 2014 season, wasn't it? Uh, during the second sector of this track and saw him sort of rip the wheel off the, uh, the entire rim itself. So, whichever Williams driver this is, uh, it is indeed, it is Bottas actually himself. So, clearly not learning from his mistakes, but he gets away with it this time round. And he's still in P5, right behind Rosberg, who in turn is now right behind us for this final podium slot. Oh my god! What the hell's happened there? Rosberg, I think, has just had an a engine failure and completely speared me round at the Panama corner. What the hell's happened there? That has completely caught me off guard. I thought we were well clear of Rosberg. And I've seen a lot of, sort of grey smoke, and I can only presume it is an engine failure of sorts. Let's have a look. And it is. He's had a complete failure. It just completely T-bones us. Which has completely ruined... Well, I say ruined. It's taken us out of the podium slot for now. Thankfully, the Mercedes of Rosberg isn't going to be challenging for that. But now we're going to have to try and get past this Williams of Bottas, who's benefited massively from that. It goes from P5 to P3 as he watches it all unfold up ahead. And just as that happened, just before that happened, I was about to say, I think it looked like we were actually closing in on the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel, because I think that was the first time in a long time that I've actually seen his car sort of flash through the screen at that penultimate corner. So, that is a big kick in the ball sack, it must be said. We're now down to P4. One of them said he's out, Rosberg is out. Raikkonen is now bolting and setting the fastest left of the race, wherever he is. I don't know where he's got to in this race. But now we've got an objective to try and pass the Williams of Valtteri Bottas. And maybe, say, so it looked like we were possibly on to uh, do something about Vettel, but that's going to be extremely unlikely now. I can't pit yet. I need to keep going. I need to go to, I think, like... Actually, let's have a look. If I just bring up the race director, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on, because I completely forgot about that. Up until this point in the race, I could have used that to see what tyres everyone was on earlier. Cheeky. Let's have a look. Oh, right, then don't. Okay, so. Uh, Hamilton is on primes. Interesting. Um, we've got Massa doing a four stop already. Let's have a look. What lap are we actually on at this point of the race? As you can see, my inconsistent lap times of dreams. Uh. So we're now about to finish lap 38, so I need to be going to lap 41, I believe. Because we pitted there, lap 24, wasn't it? So that's 
38 laps to go to the end of the race. Split that into two is 17. 17 to 24 is 41. So we've got to go another all three laps on this set of tyres, which isn't going to be easy. Right, so that's interesting. Bottas is in the pits. I believe Raikkonen just peeled off into the pit lane as well. Indeed he has. So are we going to be able to jump Bottas in the pit lane? We are indeed. There's another car here. I presume it looks like a Ferrari. Of course it'll be Sebastian Vettel. Who's actually come out on... Is that a set of prime tyres? It's not, it's options. I was too busy looking at his tyres and almost crashed into him, but we just managed to avoid contact there. So the problem is, if we try and do an extra lap which we want to, we're going to get chugged by Kimi Raikkonen, so we need to react, we need to make this pit stop now. And then suffer the pain, or go through the pain at the end of the race, but we need to keep track positions, that's been key. And when we've lost it, you've seen how bad our pace has been, how quickly the AI have been able to drive away from us. We need to keep track position ahead of Kimi Raikkonen, so we're going to be boxing now. And hopefully... The pace, although watching Vettel drive away from us on lap, that lap, is going to be extremely difficult to see how we're going to stay ahead. I can't imagine us staying ahead with the pace that that Ferrari's just shown, and the Ferrari behind us isn't going to show. A 2.5 second pit stop as well, that's not the best I've ever seen. And I'm half expecting, or 90% expecting a Ferrari to fly, b fly by the track at any point. There it is, looks like he's had a bit of traffic, so that might just save us. As we have managed to get out ahead, but I believe he's going to have DRS. Indeed, he does. We're going to go defensive against Kimi Raikkonen to hold on to this fifth place. He's gone in deep. We've held the inside and we've blocked off the path on the exit. So we have managed to hold on to P5 crucially at this point of the race. And so now we've just got to try and get these tyres through to the end of the race in as good a condition as we can. So there we go, we're back onto P4s, I believe it is Danny Kvyat, who has just pitted for the final time. Oh, there's P3, so we passed somebody in the pit lane, which is presumably Bottas. The engineer's completely failed to pick up on it, but I presume it's going to be Bottas. And there's the notification that Williams are prepping for a car, but I believe that has already been done and serviced. So that's now back up into a podium. So we've got to hold on for these last, I think, nine or ten laps. A, ahead of Raikkonen, and B, what's going to be a rampaging Bottas on, presumably, a new set of option tyres. Oh, man. Bottas is on fresh options, and he only needs to be gaining a second a lap, which is easily doable. Squeaky bum time, we are certainly not comfortable for this podium position at all. Things are going to get feisty within the next couple of laps for sure. That's not what I want to hear, at that rate he's going to be right on me at the final lap of the race. Wait, no, that was not. A, that's not rain, that is not rain. Oh my god, there's rain. Oh, it's actually raining. Oh, there's another spanner in the works for you. We're going to have to pit again. There's no way. This rain's coming in too quickly with five laps to go. There's no way we're going to make it to the end. Surely. This car's coming in the pit lane. That must be the call we need. Well, the engineer's lucked into that one. Literally a split second later, that would have been too late. But we've made the call. We've followed in the cars ahead. And we're going on to a set of intermediates. There's a... St no. There's a stack of cars. Oh, thank God we've managed to get out of that. I thought we were going to get held. But we have, but we've managed to make it through. We're still in P3. Looks like everyone else is pitting. There is Bottas. And that might have just saved us. Obviously, he was closing in at a right rate of knots on those uh, fresher tyres. And now, obviously, that's now been reset as we're all on a set of intermediates with the same wear. So now it's just a flat out race to the end. Yeah, well, I'm 
the interference was me trying to break and not end up in the walls. I'm trying to talk to you. Give me a minute. I want to see how many laps left. It must only be about four laps, I think, or something like that. Oh, great. Oh, let me talk. Oh, stop talking to me on every straight when I'm trying to talk to you. Here's four laps to go. Don't even tell me you're going to try and let me go to wet tyres. I'm not having it. Oh, the pressure is seriously mounting right now. Get the tyres ready just in case. Got cars in the pit lane. I'm staying out. They're all pitting. Oh no. Two laps to go and we're braving it. We're staying out on inters. We're not gaining any places in the pit lane. So it's just a case of trying to keep the car on the island now for these final two laps and hope that the guys behind on, I presume, wet tyres aren't going to be gaining some 12 seconds a lap on us. This is absolutely treacherous. We're about to start the final lap of the race on completely the wrong set of tyres. Let's get an update on exactly where, what's going on at this point with one lap to go. You see Vettel ahead, we're not worrying about here. We're actually in P2 now. I don't know what's happened there, but somebody has come into the pit lane and we're now into P2. And it's it's just monsoon at the moment. It's absolutely monsoon. There's no grip at all. Who's pitted then? Sh fucking engineer, driver behind. So Sebastian Vettel has pitted. He's only four seconds behind and just there's no grip, we can't do anything. Oh, is that Vettel there? It might be. I hope you guys can appreciate just how difficult this is. The final lap of the race, full wet conditions, and we're on intermediates being hunted down by drivers on full wet tyres. But there isn't any particular danger in terms of the sign of a scarlet red Ferrari. As we're in the final sector, we are going to surely... That's not a Ferrari behind us. We're surely going to grab P2 in this race. There's the race winner, which I presume is going to be Lewis Hamilton. Oh, there's the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel, now about to come around the final corner, but it's not enough, and we're going to come home for P2 at this Australian Grand Prix. What a race that has been. That has been chaotic, to say the least. That is absolutely mega. From full wets to inters to dries to dries to inters to full wets for some at the end. We made the strategy call to stay on inters at the end, and it has paid dividends as we've gone from a possible fourth place to now second place on the podium behind the sole finishing Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Oh man, that is an experience to do all of that 100% race full qualifying. That is something that I'm not used to, but it was certainly fun nevertheless. So, with that being said, there's your official, official? official classifications there. Six stops for some, five for others, seven for Felipe Massa. But it's the four stop for us that's paid dividends there, coming in second place. So you can see just how much we were struggling for pace with our with our fastest lap compared to uh, the guys around us. But strategy has paid very well there for us, and that's P2. Other results, obviously our teammate there coming home in the soul's, soul point paying position. And we've got Nico Rosberg, of course, with that controversial DNF, T-boning us midway through the race as that failure happened which looked to have actually lost us a few places but which was going to be come to the end of the race but nevertheless it wasn't to be and we were able to grab p2 so that has been absolutely mega obviously championship positions are as we finished um and that is pretty much going to be it um for this episode so 
I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it was going to. Um, it has to be said. Um, also, any any comments that you want feedback you guys want to leave, obviously leave that in the comment section below. I'll be sure to read that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you'll tune in for the next episode, uh, which will be obviously from Malaysia. But until then, it is bye for now.